Great, well let's go ahead and start. Um, this is the fourth class. I am going to be uh, teaching two-point perspective. Um, we will go through some simple forms. Um, I am not sure if we're going to get to basic values or not, but uh, we will see how that goes. Um, I'm first going to talk about a couple of things. Um, what is two-point perspective and why use it? Um, One-point perspective, Glenn went through it. Um, we have, it, it gives us focus for um, the front face of a structure usually. Um, so when the front of a building, say, is the highlight or um, the front of a car is the highlight, you want to use one-point perspective for the most part. Um, but a lot of times, uh, there's more to the object that we're trying to draw. Um, and in that case, we want to use two-point perspective, which gives us more of a three-quarters view. Um, in a three-quarters view, the viewer basically gets more information because we get to see both the front and more of the side. And as the artist, we have we can more we have more control over how much of what side we can show. We can show more of the side and a little bit of the front, or vice versa. Um, also, three-quarters view is especially preferred in design um, because, again, it gives the most information and say you're drawing something and somebody's gonna sculpt it um, they get the most information out of that three-quarters view although they would ideally want a front view, a side view, and a back view as well um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into talking about uh, horizon line and let me turn this off grab my other layer um, horizon line and vanishing points so I have two little tiny vanishing points here uh, let me make those a little bit bigger Okay, so I have my vanishing points. Um, the horizon line, obviously we talk, uh, talked about this in one point perspective as well, or I should say Glenn talked about it. Um, everything vanishes to one point in the one point perspective. In two points, everything is going to vanish into two points. Um, simple enough. Um, I will go ahead and start with a uh, cube and we're going to draw it in several different places across here. Um, let me grab square. It's about a 50%. So I'm going to draw it. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you draw, where you put it. I'm going to put it below the horizon for the first one, um, and I'm going to just put a. I'm putting a vertical line. Um, the way I put a vertical line um, is I pick the rectangle or, or the square tool um, and then I just draw a very skinny square so that gives me basically a vertical line. Um, then I will pick my line and I will start drawing lines from this line to the vanishing points. So boom boom that's two lines and then I'll have two lines going to the other vanishing point there and there so one of the things I didn't talk about yet is I put these vanishing points pretty far to the edge of the edges of the page um, the reason I do that is because the farther they are from each other the less distortion um, the three-dimensional structure will have. The closer they are, the more it will look distorted. So ideally, we want them as far away as possible. Um, oftentimes, they will be off the page. Um, anyway, this is how we 
uh, start, we take our first edge and then connect the, that edge to the two vanishing points. And then I will draw um, two other vertical lines, grabbing my square again. Um, this is going to determine basically the size of our the size of our box. And I'm calling it a box, I could call it a cube, but calling it a cube implies that it's going to be equal on all sides. Um, so there's two more vertical lines. Um, these are basically going to be our uh, two planes. Oops, need a line. So that's one plane and that's another plane. So I'll go ahead and now connect all of these points. Now um, I could just connect the ones that we're going to see, which is what you would typically do, um, do the top one since we're going to be seeing the top of the box and this top one to the vanishing point. And there's our box that we can see. Um, however, sometimes it's also useful to know what's behind this structure because this could be a glass structure or transparent structure. Um, so I will go ahead and draw the um, lines in the back of the box as well. So that forms the top and the bottom planes now. So we have this as the bottom plane and this is the top plane. And we are missing something. What are we missing? We're missing the edge in the back. So of course this is not perfect because not all my gut lines are going through the vanishing points correctly so these are probably not quite going to line up but we'll see how close I got. Uh, looks like I'm a little off so I'll just draw that sort of in between the two uh, when we zoom out, it's close enough. So there is our box. Any questions so far? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna periodically just pause and ask for questions. Um, if anyone has anything they want to know more about, please uh, chime in. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna plow through what I'm planning to teach here. Okay, sounds like no questions. Um, I will go on ahead then. Um, I'm going to draw one more. Uh, this time, let's draw it closer to the center, and I'm going to draw a slightly different shaped box. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. So, let's draw the next line over here. It's a little thick. So, I will connect to that. Same way, exactly the same way I did here. Um, I'm just going to give it slightly different dimensions and we'll talk about what that does. Okay, so I'm dropping my edge lines. And we'll drop the other one over here.
So this is obviously more of a rectangular structure. Um, this one was more of a square on one side and then um, longer lengthwise. The other one was longer lengthwise. This one's going to be longer uh, widthwise, except I don't have a line. So that's the longer dimension there. And I will go ahead and continue to draw this. Um, connecting to the vanishing point. Connecting this to the vanishing point. And then we'll draw behind it as well. Boom. Boom. And we'll do the back line. Wow, that is way off. But it's okay, this is just an exercise. Okay. So, here just to shade quickly, actually I'm going to use freehand. Uh, this is the top plane. This here is the bottom plane. Okay, you guys can see those. And then this is the back plane. the front plane and then the others are the two sides so what I tend to typically do after this stage um, is I would fade this down and then just draw the part that I can see uh, but before I get to that I want to draw one more um, this time I want to straddle the horizon line and just show you what that does um, so we'll draw this one right here Hopefully these lines are not going to get too confusing. So that line goes to the horizon. That line goes to the vanishing point, I mean. And boom. Boom. Vertical lines. I'm going to use an existing line there. Okay, so this structure, when I'm drawing the other lines, oh look, this line right here already exists, so I don't even have to draw that line again. So we're just going to be using that one, and this one I'm sending to the vanishing point. So now this is looking like too many lines and as you draw two points perspective and put, start putting your structures in it if this is the way you draw then you are going to end up with a lot of guidelines and um, it can start to look messy so I will add another layer um, reduce the opacity of this one and then in my new layer I can pick a different color let's pick like a dark blue um, I'm going to just do this with freehand uh, because it's faster, it's a little more organic, um, and um, we're not going to worry too much about accuracy here, but when you're practicing this yourselves, you can spend as much or as little time as you like. Um, I'm going to make slightly thicker lines, and let's increase the opacity. So I'm just drawing the lines that are going to be seen.
Alright, so there's our three boxes, um, one of them below the horizon line, the other one above the horizon line, and the third one straddling the horizon line. Simple enough. Any questions so far? Okay, so next I want to talk a little bit about um, common mistakes that I see. Um, thank you, Pantella. Um, so some of the common mistakes that I see are um, people start with, you know, some idea of where they want to place items, which surface they're going to see, but then as they keep drawing, they will forget about where they started. So say there's this building here, and then um, somebody might decide, oh, I'm going to add another building right next to it. So I'm going to draw it right here, um, and this line is going this way, so I'm going to draw the next line more or less parallel to it. So they go there, and then I have my guidelines here, of course, so that's making my job a little easier. Let me erase those so I can make mistakes easier. So they build their next building and then there's another building next to it and then there's another building next to it so they built their buildings and then something looks strange here um, so when you put the guidelines back on oh wait a minute my points are no longer vanishing toward my vanishing point so this line should really have been there. This line is way off, it should have been there. This line is way, way off, it should have been there. And my roofs, I drew them all parallel, but that's not where my horizon is. So this is really all wrong. So let's fade it away. And let's do it correctly. So let's put it, put it on a new layer. This one is more or less okay, but then the bottom has to follow the next line. And then the next one is actually going to go up a little bit, it looks like, and follow this line. And the next one, I want a shorter building, so it's going to be down here. And of course, these two buildings are below the horizon line. So I should be seeing their rooftops. Now I'm not going to bother drawing a, another guideline that's going all the way uh, back to there. So it's m pretty close to horizontal, so I'm just going to eyeball it and draw something that's pretty close to horizontal here. And that is more of what those boxes, buildings, whatever we want to call them, maybe steps, um, would look like based on the horizon line and the vanishing point that we have selected. Okay. Any questions there so far? Can you guys still hear me? All right, good deal. Okay, so um, as you just kind of saw a little bit me doing it here, um, but the more items you have to put in your grid, in your in perspective, um, the more lines start to get confusing. So I want to show you um, how I use a perspective grid um, in order to do some of this stuff. So I will turn these layers off.
Here's my perspective grid. Okay, so um, I've drawn this beforehand because it's a little tedious to get all those lines, but it's basically um, a whole bunch of lines going through uh, two vanishing points. Actually, those vanishing points are not the same as the red ones I was using earlier, so I will turn those off. Um, so there's two obvious vanishing points and then a whole bunch of grid lines is what you're seeing here. What this does for me is it makes kind of a guideline as to where I want to place things. Um, so let me draw um, at least one of those cubes and then I'll draw some slightly different forms here. Um, let's go with the square. Lower my opacity. Um, we'll pick a green, why not? And skin your lines. Okay. Um, let's draw draw something down here. I really don't care where my where this line starts, where it ends. It doesn't matter. All, all that matters is where it is on the page. I put it where I want it on the page. I'm not really paying attention to the grid um, when I place that first line. But let's say this is going to be sort of a bird's eye view of uh, some buildings because they're the simplest things to uh, think about. Um, so my next line would be going toward that vanishing point um, but my vanishing point isn't even on my screen I have zoomed in a whole lot so but there's that guideline over there so I can take it and use it and make it as long as I want it to be um, and I am drawing on the wrong layer so let me pick the correct layer So this one happened to line up right on top of another line, which is fine. Um, let's take it to there. This one is not on a line. So what I do is I will draw that line, and I'm basically going between my two guidelines. It looks like I need a little more space up top, so I give it, and boom, there is that other line. Now let's go toward the other vanishing point. This is going to be just slightly underneath this one, and always think about these lines converging toward the vanishing point. So, and this one looks like it's right on top of my guideline, so we'll draw it there. Now, I'll drop some vertical lines. One there. We'll draw one there. And then continue on similarly. I am using the guideline. I'm running more or less parallel to it, converging just a little bit. Yeah, I do wrong layer all the time. Then I have to undo and redo. This one comes over to there. So there we go, and then I will pick up my handy dandy vector eraser to clean this up, except not with a line. Erase that, erase that. So, boom, there's the box. Um, It doesn't just look easy, it is easy once you do it a few times and uh, grasp the basics of it, really. Yeah, what Fleur said. Oh, no problem. 
Um, okay, so this is pretty much how I would use a grid line. So next, let's draw another building uh, next to this one. Um, this one, I am going to actually have it stick out a little bit. And it's going to be a taller building. So let's start up here somewhere. And let's have it come down. Oops not the right tool. Where I want it. I want a little bit of space between those buildings. That's good. So this next building, um, let's draw the top of it first. That's easy. Um, let's make it go pretty far. It's going to be a huge building. Um, over on this side. Down there. Again, always converging, make sure this uh, this part right here is a little bit larger than this over here. You can see how it's converging toward my guideline. So, always pay attention to that. Um, and over here, this line is going to get hidden behind the other building, so I am just going to take it... Um, actually, you can take it longer. Um, if it makes it easier to draw and then erase what you don't want. Ultimately these are all still guidelines you're going to be drawing on top of all of this. This is just laying in the basic structure. Um, so. Clean it up. And then this line down to where the building is, and then this end of the building, bring it down, okay so we have a second building. Um, so one other thing I kind of want to mention is um, when using the grid, we kind of don't pay atten too much attention to uh, what sides of a box we can actually see or can't see. Basically, um, if you're not using a grid, uh, you, you do have to think about that. And um, if it's above your horizon line, don't draw a roof on top of it because you can't really see a roof if it's above the horizon. Um, if it's below the horizon, draw that rooftop. Um, now let's do a few more, I, I, I'm going to show a couple more mistakes here. Um, this grid is something I drew, but I can certainly make it available uh, for download. It's not the most accurate one. I, I, I could work on a more accurate one and make that um, downloadable if you guys want. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to just pick a new layer to make my mistakes in. Um, so this building needs a giant window, I decide, so um, I am going to draw a window. Um, and we're drawing in 3D space, so um, always keep that in mind. Um, so my window is going to be, oh, let's draw another vertical line over here. Okay, 
So we use this guideline, and then um, we'll just use this guideline. That's fine. So um, let's turn off the grid for a second, and I'll make my mistake, and then we'll come back to it. So this is a building with a window. Um, how are windows drawn? Uh, I've drawn many windows. They always look like this, so I can see the inside of the window. Uh, so there's going to be a vertical line coming down here. There's going to be a horizontal line there. Let me just go freehand so I, you guys can see it better. There's going to be a horizontal line there. And then there's going to be a line that's coming toward me. So, eh, more or less. Now it's a more of a three-dimensional opening. Um, I don't like that line. Okay. Does this look right? Um, doesn't look horribly wrong. Um, let's turn on our guidelines and see where it went wrong. Ah, so this horizontal line does not really belong there. It should have been following this guideline. So it should really be there. Okay. So that's just another common mistake I see. People uh, revert to, while doing drawing um, two point perspective, they will revert to one point perspective and start drawing squares instead of um, following their vanishing points. Everything cool so far? Um, any questions? No questions? All right. Um, so one more thing I kind of want to teach you. Um, we're we're going to do some cylinders, but before we do cylinders, I want to show you one other thing that will be uh, somewhat important when we're doing cylinders. Um, I'm going to use this front uh, building right here, um, and I want to find where the center of this building is so that I can draw a door um, at the bottom of the building here. This, this is the building I'm talking about. So... I will finding the center of a box or any surface really is fairly simple. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll just have a new layer. I know I go a little layer crazy, but bear with me. So I basically draw a cross and then the center point of that cross is basically where um, the center of the building is going to be. So I will tell you right now that these two, these two are not equal distances. Um, not sure if I can demonstrate that in some way. Um, but as objects get further and further away from us, um, they will, the same distance will appear closer and closer and closer. So let me see if I can demonstrate that with a larger area. Um, here. Let's clear that. Let me show it on the larger building. Crisscross. 
by in the center. Drop the center down. Okay, I think this is a little bit more obvious. You can see it better. This is much larger than that. And this is the true center of this building. So if I was going to draw a door there, um, or some other sort of structure, this is where it would go. And you'll notice um, I made it just a little bit larger there than there. Um, so that part is kind of eyeballed because we know things are going to um, get closer to each other as we get closer to the horizon. Yes, yes, if you look at the triangles, that is a larger triangle than that one. Okay. So um, this is kind of important when we start doing um, something like a cylinder. So let me see, um, let's place, let's grab a new layer. And I am going to actually let's turn those off. Okay, the way I draw a cylinder is, um, if I'm trying to make it accurate, I start with a box usually. Um, so that is what I will do here. Um, and I want to demonstrate a couple points, so I will put it below the horizon line again. And this one, it is kind of important to draw the um, side that we can't see just because it is helpful um, for the circles. Okay. One more. So, um, one of the things you're going to notice right away is, and I want to point it out, uh, this right here is a much larger surface area than this up here. So, um, that is because as we get farther and farther away from that horizon line, we can see more and more of that horizontal plane. So anything that's close to the horizon line is going to be very, very skinny. So if I was trying to draw a, uh, a cylinder that's very close to the horizon line, it would be super skinny um, and uh, barely any curve to it. Um, but the further you get away from the horizon line, um, the bigger uh, that cylinder is going to get. So down here... Um, 
we're gonna be we're gonna have a much larger cylinder. I'm just eyeballing this for the moment. Um, I will draw a slightly better one in a second. So we drew this. Let's find those um, center points again. Um, line. These are all guidelines here that we're drawing. Um, boom. Boom. And drop a vertical line from there. And then let's do the same on this surface as well. Boom. Boom. And a vertical line. Okay, so we have the center points um, right there and right there, um, and we can find it's their corresponding points if we, you just imagine um, a line going across to the other side. Um, you'll see there's a corresponding point there, and if this goes to the other side, there's a corresponding point right there. So those are going to be the tangents of our ellipse. Um, so what I'm going to do is make sure I am touching those as I draw this ugly ellipse. Let me try that again. I will probably try that a few times until I get it more where I want. Okay, that's pretty good. So that is the ellipse down at the bottom and then the one up top is going to be much skinnier um, you can go through the same process pull these lines um, pull these lines up pull that line up find the centers there uh, but since this is such a skinny ellipse I'm not gonna worry too much about it um, I am just going to draw that ellipse up top So, um, it doesn't quite look right. And it takes a few tries. Okay, that's better. And then, last but not least, I want to check to see, nope, my ellipse was up top wasn't quite right, or my bottom one isn't quite right, but that's okay, I can adjust those, these are just guidelines. Um, boom, boom, those will be more or less my horizontal lines. Now let's lower the opacity of this horrid contraption, and let's draw it for real. Um, I'll go back to blue. Um, So, I'm tempted to try a circle here. Normally what I would do is I would draw a circle and then I would transform it. Um, yeah, I, I would transform it to get it there, but every time I transform, um, the stream seems to crash, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to freehand it. Well, let me Let me try the circle first. Yeah, the orientation isn't quite right. Uh, it's a decent enough approximation, though. We'll leave it with that. Okay, I think that's a decent enough approximation for our purposes. But if you use transform, yeah, you can definitely get a much more accurate uh, circle in perspective. And then drop these. Huh. 
hide that. So that's the cylinder in perspective. Um, and of course I would go ahead and erase the part that we shouldn't actually see. And there's the cylinder. Um, cylinders are probably uh, the more complex object to draw. You can certainly eyeball them. There's nothing wrong with eyeballing them. Um, just keep in mind um, the circles or ellipses um, are going to be wider down below and then they'll get skinny as you get close to the horizon line they'll be skinny above the horizon line and then they'll get wider once again when you um, get way above the horizon line so um, as long as you um, keep that principle in mind you can eyeball them um, they will probably look fine for the most part unless it's a huge cylinder that's gonna stick out like a sore thumb if it's not right in which case I would spend a little bit of extra time to um, draw a circle, transform it into the perspective grid, um, and draw over it. So, any questions so far here on cylinders? Um, yes, it would. So, um, basically your cylinder would look like if part of it is above, part of it is below. Um, you would only see that up top and that at the bottom. Basically it goes with the same principle. Um, you will not see the rooftop if it's above the horizon line. No problem. Um, so I'm going to bring back my buildings because um, I want to show you how to place little people and such. Um, so actually, I don't need that. Okay, let's bring back the buildings. Um, I think this one I said was going to be about an hour. I can run it hour and a half. Um, yeah, Glenn typically goes hour and a half to two hours. Uh, depends on the material. Um, yeah, I think Coban has a grid, uh, somebody mentioned, um, that is downloadable in the, uh, templates, I believe. But, um, after this I will go ahead and um, upload another one. Um, basically the way to make it is fairly simple. Uh, it's tedious, but it doesn't take too terribly long. Um, you just mirror it and then um, draw the lines and then transform and flip the bottom side. Yeah, yeah, it's not too hard. Um, so, little people. Um, oh, we want to go freeform. Uh, they're really not that hard. Um, let's say, um, okay, this window is kind of bothering me, so I'm going to erase it. not the scale I was thinking of. Okay, so let's say we have a door over here. Uh, so that's the scale of our door. So um, person walking out of that door would be about yay tall. They're walking out. They're waving at you. Um, 
So that's about the size of a person. Um, so I want a different color to mark these. So that's the top and that's the bottom of the person. Um, since we have a vanishing point, we can do all sorts of tricks um, with determining how tall that person is going to be. Now, if we have a whole bunch of people lined up and going in this direction toward the vanishing point, it's very straightforward. Um, so this is between these two lines, so the next guy is going to be between those lines and those lines. Next guy is going to be right there. Next guy is going to be right there. Next guy is going to be right there. So then coming toward us, um, there's a guy that's coming out of this alleyway. He's going to be a tall. And then next guy is way out here in front of us, and he's going to go off the screen. His feet are, uh, we can't see where his feet are. So that's a bunch of guys going toward the horizon um, using our guidelines. Um, now let's move this person uh, in this direction. So again I will follow the guidelines. So the same person over here is going to be the same height. Over here is going to be the same height. And then this guy coming over here is going to be a tall. Um, again, still going with my guidelines. This guy over here is going to be a tall. This guy, um, let's move him here. Boom. So, as long as I'm on that grid, I can go anywhere and draw a guy. So, let's say you want to figure out how tall is this guy going to be, somebody right over here. So we know how tall this guy is. I bring him over to there. That's how tall he would be um, on that line and he's a little bit further behind so he's going to be a little bit taller than that. So that's where that guy is going to be. So you want another guy somewhere else or is this good enough for placing same size objects um, around the grid? Um, we can do one flying if you guys want. Um, so how tall is somebody who's hovering right up there going to be? Well, he can really be anywhere. Um, but we will do it this way. Um, he is equidistant from there to there is about the same as there to there. Okay, let me use mirror. So that line is right there. So I figure out how tall this guy is going to be. Turn the mirror off. He is going to be about yay tall because I know how tall this guy is right here. I'm using him as my guideline. So that's how tall this guy should be. Uh, his head is there. So if his body was coming down, it would be a tall. So we'll have him flying. So that's about how tall he's going to be. His head should be up a little bit, not down. So. That's how you would figure out how tall people are now. Of course, 
that person could be in the same placement a lot closer to us as well. Um, so you could move him way up. Um, but as he gets bigger, um, if his head is that big, then he's way closer to us. So we're not going to see the rest of his body, obviously. So that's another dimension that you kind of have to think about. Um, but we're just, for now, uh, playing with the scale of the grid that is that we've established instead of stepping outside of that. Um, let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Um, any questions so far? Okay, I think I have pretty much covered most of what I want to cover. Um, if you guys want to see more, um, I can go on for a little bit more, um, but otherwise, um, I'm just going over my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah, I didn't do any shading, um, and we can do some slightly different forms if you want, if you like. Um, one of the things I was thinking about doing is a car. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, and this is another good time to talk about um, mistakes uh, that I tend to see. Um, can I turn off my people? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, we'll have a car parked right about there. Um, so if I didn't have my grid, let's make some mistakes again and then let's correct them. Um, if I didn't have my grid, I would be going, oops, go to the correct layer. I'd be going, okay, this is my car. I've got wheels. Um, I've got a roof. Okay, so that would be my little car. Not very fancy. Um, then I will turn my grid back on. Okay, so let's see where I went wrong. Um, as is fairly typical, I didn't... Let me make sure I'm on the right layer, I'm on the right layer. I didn't quite get this angle right. Um, this angle, this angle, that angle was more or less right. Uh, my wheels aren't sitting correct on my grid. And I might see a little bit of the tire back there. So the rest of them I think I did pretty okay actually, surprisingly. And then you can noodle around with it. Now um, let's make that car larger. Um, oh, I can't transform. I hate not being able to transform because this thing's going to crash if I do. Um, let's just 
Oh, turn these off. Turn that off. And let's draw a vehicle somewhere here. Actually, let's just clear that. So I, I, I will almost always start with a basic shape. Let's draw it bigger. And you can see I am not paying too terribly much attention to drawing straight lines and such. You can get more accurate later. Um, so let's do some more angular design for our car. All we have to pay attention to really is that some of these lines need to uh, obey perspective. And then my roof is going to go this way. This way. Put the tire, actually, the tire will be more there. Of course, that is a horrid ellipse. Okay. This is going to be the top of the car. Usually, there's can't see that part. It's the back. The back tire is going to go right down that guideline. It's going to be much smaller because it's going back in perspective. That is a weird looking car. Why is that such a weird looking car? Because my lines aren't going where they should. So I really should pay more attention to my grid. So we'll clean up. So what's wrong with this here? The tires don't have any width. Okay. The tires need some width. Too bad there's no transform or I would increase this distance with transform. Here, let's fix it. That feels better. Anyway, start out very simple. Always start out simple. And then you can get it moving afterwards. Now we're drawing without any reference whatsoever, so this is looking horrid, obviously. But 
can always get references after you start something and then start correcting it. Um, this is an old 1960s vehicle of some sort, obviously. But that's more or less how I use the grid. And we can keep noodling with it, erase bits. then I can I can always add design elements um, like I can draw something like that where the hood would be a little bit lower um, I can have um, a little doodad up top where there's maybe a sign or something because this is obviously not a very expensive vehicle. I had a turret. <laughs> Open, open this passenger side up. That's not right. Go with the grid. So we'll make this a T-top. Let me draw a little bit of the inside as well. And we'll open the T-top. There is a mounted weapon of some sort. We'll make it a ray gun. It's got some sort of targeting system on its side. There. <laughs> okay. So that's more or less how you use a grid. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. I will respond to your messages. Um, I don't mind. Um, on any of the material that we've discussed, talked about here. And if you guys have any uh, other topics that you want to discuss or um, you want me to do another stream or anything like that, um, let me know. I will be available. Um, otherwise, I am just going to call this done um, and start working on some of my own stuff. <laughs>